Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Uh, joining you as usual from San Diego on the west coast of America and today I'm delighted to be joined by Trish Jenkins who is actually on the in, in Brisbane in Queensland in Australia so she's actually coming from the future which I always love so have you got the lot of numbers for me <laughs> oh, not the lot of numbers just the temperature it's a beautiful day for you tomorrow yeah, no. <laughs> that's fantastic. And uh, and uh, Trish is a she's a motivational speaker. She is a an author uh, and a consultant. And uh, we're going to talk about the shift and lift mindset for change. And a lot of this is based on we might as well get straight into it. Um, a lot of this is based on a hopefully an experience that most other people haven't had. Um, but you uh, somewhat unwittingly ended up in incarcerated for for a period of time and obviously you know that has influenced uh, obviously that's going to be a massive influence on you uh, but you do say the strongest prison bars holding you back are in your head and i think most people would would agree with that and i do think people lock themselves in these in these prisons um, of maybe um, lack of confidence worry fear of failure fear of success there are so many different things so um let's just start at the beginning uh as we were talking before you went on uh, before we went on air you know there was there was an issue you were working in in a in a fund the person running the fund was a crook you tried your best to to do the right thing, but it fell foul of some other rules. And given the given the climate back at the financial crisis, they were always looking to punish and scapegoat people and whatever. So you ended up in prison. But you, um, but looking back on it now, would you swap that experience? <laughs> John, <laughs> yes, I would. Yeah. I would. I broke the law. If I could go back and change it, I would. However, I can't, you know, yeah. you, you, I can't, but I have found treasure in the darkness. And that's what, what my book is called, Treasures of Darkness. You know, I'm not one of these people who say they have no regrets. I kind of think those sort of people tend to be more um, sociopaths, <laughs> but I've got plenty of them. And that's one of them. If I could keep all my money and not go to jail, then that's probably would have been my preference. However, the good that has come out of it is amazing and I love my life now. And I actually, I like the person I've become now. But it didn't happen because I went to prison. Yeah. It happened because of the responses I chose to take towards prison. Because everybody finds themselves in some kind of prison, as you said. It might be fear, insecurity. It might be, um, you know, your, your work environment, and you, you may or may not have a choice about leaving. Some people can quit their job. I couldn't quit and say, I've had enough of this. See you later. I'm out of here. You know, yeah. I was stuck. And I knew, I knew enough that I needed to be very careful about what went on in here, in my head. And uh, I knew my number one enemy and yours is self-pity. Yeah. And... And self righteousness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but let me let me ask you this because I think this is a really interesting point here. Is because let's face it, uh, to, to coin a phrase that's apt here, most of us. I mean, most of us who are not incarcerated, right? We have a get out of jail card, right? We can quit. We can walk off. We can throw our hands up in the air. We can blame the world and whatever, and we can walk on and do something else. Uh, when that is removed as an option, as it was for you because you're in prison, what difference does that make in terms of, of you know, your whole psyche at the fact that you say, okay, I have to deal with this. I have no choice. There's nothing, there's no way out for me right now. I have to forge a path forward. Well, you always have a choice about what goes on here. You might not be able to control your environment, but you can control your response to your environment and I would challenge people who, who would think, well, I can, I can always quit my job. I can always leave my marriage. I can always this or that. There is always a price to pay for what Australians call piking out. 
you, yeah. you give in to that pressure. And look, I understand mental health. I understand stress. Anxiety. Mate, I understand anxiety and fear and terror. I lived with it because it took years before I actually landed in jail. The offence was 05. I'm in jail at 09. However, the price you pay for taking what you think is the easy option is, is immeasurable. Kids not speaking to you ever again, that, that you're lo- growing old lonely. Or, or Now, I'm not saying you should stay in a job, but you've got to look at the options because if the, if the problem is in you, if you've got a stinky attitude, you've got stinking thinking, and that's actually what's affecting your job. And you might not be aware of that straight away because most people think that they're right. They just go with whatever they think. But I had to self-assess and go, I have to survive here. And this whole attitude has got to, I have to think in a way that's going to be problem solving rather than defending. Most of us would rather defend than problem solve. Hmm? Yeah. So that's where I think, how else can I see this? Yeah, no, that's a, it's it's a great point, but I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to pick up on a moment there because you mentioned something that's kind of a, a bit of a soapbox uh, of mine, but the self awareness piece because and I wish to be honest, I wish somebody had told me this a lot earlier in my life, uh, but I think that journey of self awareness and you don't have to you don't have to go to prison to go through it. Um, that journey of self awareness and really understanding who you are and how and looking at how you react to things and, and being aware of that is the most lib- I feel is the most liberating experience you can have and it'll change your life dramatically if you take the time out to do it. Yes, and you need humility. Mm-hmm. And we don't always want to be humble about things. We'd rather be right. Because but the, the beautiful thing about humility is that when your ego is to the side, you can be more objective about your responses and how you might do things better next time. We live in a touchy, touchy world. And look, I want to suggest if if any of your viewers have a problem with humility, if they find, I really want to be humble, but oh, I don't know. You go and find some prison officers who happen to be butch lesbians who can strip search you and see how you like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a hum- humbling a experience. Left, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> humbling. That's a humbling experience for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, but, it, but it's, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Trish, is we live in a very strange world today where actually being with yourself and, and is almost counterculture because we're so bombarded with everything and people are on devices all the time and you know they're not happy unless they're in a group chat or they're on this or they're on that and taking time out to become self-aware and look at what is holding you back I, as i said it's almost counterculture and it seems such a shame that we have just bomb, we have created a world where people are surrounded by so much noise that they can't hear themselves. Yeah, I wonder if people are afraid to be on their own and Mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of depression comes from because they they associate alone with lonely. And, you know, your own company can be a marvellous thing and it's when you're still, and it's only when you're still. I do recommend people look up some personality quizzes and things to find out what their tendencies are Mm -hmm. uh, because you know we we do certain personalities have certain tendencies uh, and that can help with dealing with them like okay so me one of my tendencies is the need for approval and people pleasing and that's what got me into trouble John Mm -hmm. because I tried to fix the problem that wasn't mine to fix now that I'm aware of that I go "Oh, oh hold on where's that coming from okay I don't you know it, it helps me with my priorities and to not undermine myself. So that's really, really important. Being by yourself, you know, going for a walk. You don't have to be in a horrible, you, you can go out, I would recommend go out on the grass, take your shoes off and, and just earth yourself, but find out your own company. It's, it's not a bad thing. And when you're still, when you're quiet, look, if you have to put some quiet music on, I will often put some um, instrumental music on um i have a faith background so i'll put some worship music on 
uh, and, and I just let it play so I can just be still. And, you know, that's when your answers start to come up, when you give yourself some time. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you totally. I do think uh, I do think we have created a, a world where a lot of people are afraid to be with themselves. And you're right, they think so doing things alone, it's like scares a lot of people. I, I, as we were, I, we were speaking before coming on air, I visited, uh, been fortunate to visit Australia many times, love the place, you know, want to except my wife want to go back someday and like maybe spend two months traveling around or something. But when I used to travel there, I mean, at one stage I was traveling from DC before I was living on the, the West Coast. Oh. So I was like flying to LA late at night and then getting on a plane 14 hours to, to Sydney. And, and I loved traveling alone. People said, do you, do you, oh, it's going to be really lonely traveling. I said, no, I loved it because it, it's, it's space to think. And I thought that was just a wonderful thing, a space to think and then arrive at, uh, you know, arrive early on a Sunday morning and then have time to wander around Sydney. You love wandering around Sydney or take the, the ferry out to Manly or whatever. But that I, I that's what I always say to people is like, it's amazing what you discover about yourself if you're prepared to spend some time with yourself. Well, yeah, and it's it, you're the one you have to. Uh, look look up to you know who, who's going to fix my problem you know you, you, your flight gets cancelled what do I do oh you're not not deferring to someone with you well what do we do it's like okay what do I do okay I'll, I'll, I'll find the service you know you, you're taking I do me too when when I was traveling I'd travel to America and and do those things and even in my history as a you know my 20 years in in business and and work uh, as a sales rep you know you, you you travel somewhere you fly or you drive somewhere and you're there on your own you're not there the whole time and it's it's and it's wonderful to encounter new things it's a different way of looking at it which which is the the shift and lift mentality which actually helps with sales with business with confidence with everything yeah. and something else you mentioned earlier that i just wanted to come back to was that idea of consequences and i think this is where sometimes uh, people overlook that everything you do has consequences, including the things that you don't do. Uh, and people only think, you know, if you do something, yeah, there might be a, there might be a consequence, positive or negative, but they think, well, the safe option is to do nothing, but there's consequences of that too. Yep. It's an opportunity cost. That's true. Yeah. And, and I think that's what holds people back often is because as, as humans, as we don't like making choices. So therefore we think, okay, because if I choose this, I'm unchoosing that. And maybe I don't want to unchoose yeah. that. So maybe that's not it. And so we, we paralyze ourselves sometimes by not actually saying, okay, making decisions and, and is a good thing, you know, forward, moving forward is a good thing. And yeah, maybe you have to pivot maybe you have to take a step back whatever but just staying locked as you said in the prison uh, prison bars of your mind is is you're missing out on on your full potential oh you are you you really are i'm so glad you brought that up because you've got to have a crack you've got to have a crack at things you know what you've got to ask yourself what's the worst that can happen are you going to go to jail well if that's a risk Maybe that is something you should maybe not do. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Are you going to die? Is this going to kill you? Uh, unlikely. Am, is my family going to starve? Well, no, I might lose some money, but they might not starve. You do have to do risk assessment. I've got two books out on fraud warning signals, which is about questions you need to ask before you part with your finances. Uh, about anything these are these are things that your accountant and lawyer will not tell you because they're personal uh, but when you you know at some point you've got to count the cost what is the risk you know you, you don't you don't bang everything on look when you're 20 you can afford to lose everything when you're 70 not so much so it's a calculated risk and I don't give financial advice by the way but have some adventures and practice practice taking little risks like when i talk about um courage sometimes i do talks on on getting brave you know get your brave on and i'll say you know what do something that you would not uh, normally be really scared of like, but just go on a go to a theme park and go on a scary ride if that's not too bad just you know little go to the shops go go for that sale of you know Often it's related to business and sales, 
and, and taking risks. And uh, I heard this morning on another Zoom that, that, you know, they say that the most frightening thing uh, is public speaking. I don't think that's true. That, that you know, say there's death in public speaking and people would rather, public, would rather die. <laughs> Selling. Selling is scary. And they will stay in a low paying job rather than take a risk. And, and the risk isn't that they can't sell. The risk is actually because we're trained as kids not to talk to strangers. Mm. I never taught my kids stranger danger. I said, to, because I know that the greatest risk to my children is from someone they know, statistically. So I was careful about that. But I said to them, strangers are friends you've not yet met. And, uh, and, you know, we would take them around the street with bags of lollies selling door to door. We'd be there with them practicing. But for ourselves, do little steps and ask yourself, how, what am I thinking about this? You've got to shift the way you're thinking. How else can I see this situation? And that's what I learned in prison, John, is that I had this, it was a scary environment, scary people who saw me as a threat. And the reason they did is because I'm not disadvantaged. They saw me come in. They assumed that I thought I was better than them. Somehow there was something about me that didn't fit in. Go figure. Don't know what, but, you know. Uh, and I had to live there and have relationships with these people. How am I going to do that? Am I going to judge them? There's us and them. We often think in terms of us and them. Yeah. But I've got, I've got some news for everyone. My dad used to say, I've got news for you, son, and it's all bad. But, no, this is actually good news. There is no us and them. Take away the us and them. There's only us. And I had to think, how else could I see this person? How else can I see the situation? And how am I showing up for this? How else could I show up for this? John, those questions, they're, they're questions that open up solutions. And when you see someone who looks scary, I have no, I have zero fear of anybody who looks frightening, just zero, because right. I know that everybody, uh, look, I'm not stupid. You know, if someone looks like they're on drugs or something, I'm not going to bowl up to them. Uh, but all, and all anger, all anger mm -hmm. is fear. Yeah. Anyone who's angry is afraid. I don't care who you are. I don't care how big and tough you are. I know that there's a little boy inside you who's terrified. And maybe it started when you were three years old. It doesn't make you any less dangerous, but I'm not going to be intimidated. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just not. But seeing the people, hearing their stories, we have these stereotypes. And when I got to know them and know their stories, I shifted to empathy and compassion yeah and, and, and that I, changed, the, changed everything yeah and, and i love that you brought the empathy piece because i think sometimes people and i do think people don't misunderstand empathy too sometimes they think empathy is sympathy or enabling or whatever which it's not i mean you can be empathetic and still deliver uh, necessary tough messages to people um but but the part also that I just wanted to come back to here is this small steps piece, because I do think that sometimes we get caught up in these grandiose, like we set these huge goals and then we get afraid because they're so big instead of saying, yeah, it's great to have big goals. It's great to be ambitious and everything, but then pull yourself back and say, OK, what are the what are the next couple of steps I need to take? And then it becomes less scary because we always we do. I think we just look at we just set this destination on top of the hill and then we get excited about it and then we get petrified on it, petrified of it and we yeah. get paralyzed. Look, little wins matter. Give yourself some little wins and yeah, get your ego out of the way. You know, a lot of it's just bluster and, and we hear people talk big and we just think, oh yeah, I want to take on the world. You know, for some people, just like for me in the early days when I came home, just getting out of bed, making my bed was an achievement. Yeah. you know that was it was so hard I had PTSD uh, but but I also knew that I I had three little girls and a husband who had also suffered they were in a prison of their own without without his wife and their mummy uh, whoops sorry about that <laughs> no worries 
<laughs> I've given up locking him in, locking him away because I'm. Well, yeah, but I think what happened right there, to be honest, Trish, was you mentioned your husband and your three daughters. You didn't mention the dog, and the dog is like, "Hey, come on, why don't I get mentioned?" Well, he is my head of marketing, <laughs> so uh, one day. He he's my companion downstairs because I'm this is I'm under my house. This mm. room is, is part of my garage. My cars are behind this wall. This was going to be our kids' music room, and they got older and they're off with their friends. So I went, I'm having this. <laughs> so yeah, it's like I used to lock him upstairs and go, oh, yeah, keep it all professional. It's like you know what? He's part of my world. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I've had cats, kids, everything. It's great. Um, I, I think I think if there's one thing that's come out of the the, the pandemic is that um, without crossing over into being silly and and as you say, like totally unprofessional, you know, a little bit of authenticity, a little bit of casualness is fine. You know, just be being real because you mentioned that earlier about being real, and I think that's 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 part of it. Um, but yeah, I, I I I just wanted to again just just that whole that whole piece about about our fear of people and us and them and all of that is is yeah it's it's incredible how limiting that can be um and at the end of the day when you when you are kind of afraid of somebody or you look on somebody as as well i gotta avoid that person it's more about you at the end of the day it's more about you know your own thought patterns and all of that kind of thing and and it can be it is very liberating to sort of look beyond the the facade, if you like. It's not always the easiest thing to do, and maybe it won't work out, whatever. But but just taking taking that chance, I think if we took a little bit more chances, I think the world would be a better place. So if you're in sales and it's fearful, you know, we, we can often use depersonalizing words like prospect. They're, they're like... A, a goal, a notch on the belt that you've got to try and get. Let's not think that way. That's a person and you're selling to them is helping them solve a problem. So empathy is putting yourself in their shoes and saying, what is that? What problems do they have? And what does that feel like for them? Then your compassion is going to come up and you're not going to see them as, as a, like a, a tag or a, or a notch that you've you've won, you're going to say, oh, I helped that person today, and I feel really good about myself with it. If you saw your sales that way, then that's going to change your life. It's going to shift and lift your thinking, and people are going to respond to you. They're not going to think, "Whoa, here's that, like I'm a fish, and that's a fisherman trying to catch me and hook me." It's oh, here's the person who can help me with my issues, with yeah. my problem. And, and I think the, the other the other part of that, too, I think, is that we often overlook, particularly in business to business selling. Right. I always say like in, in, in business in consumer purchases. Right. I can go down to Best Buy now and I can buy the latest 4K Ultra HD TV and I can come home. And probably the worst thing that's going to happen to me is my wife will hit me over the head with it because it wasn't the priority purchase. However, in a business environment, if I'm making a purchase, uh, at the end of the day, I may be staking my reputation on it. It may be career enhancing if it works out. It may be career limiting if it doesn't. I may have. I may be putting myself out there. So there's a lot of there's a lot of emotion and pressure on the buyer side that I don't think we always, to your point of, of empathy, I don't think we always look at and say, okay, well, what's at stake for this person? And if they're reacting in a way that we perceive as negative or whatever, what's behind that? That's a really great point, John. It really is because they they could get, if, if they blow it, if they buy your thing and it doesn't work, they're yeah. the ones getting in trouble. Yeah, because what do they so, always say about success has many whatever parents or whatever and uh, failure is an orphan, something like that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people who want to take credit for your success. Yeah. That, that's very true. Yeah, but and if it so doesn't work that, out, it's suddenly like, oh, well, that was John's project. That was John's idea. Look, and uh, really, that's life. Yeah. Really, that, that's, that's often the way. And I think don't take yourself so seriously mm -hmm. because you'll live to fight another day and have a sense of humour about things. I've had some colossal stuff-ups and, and purchases. With the pandemic, buying stuff, for, for my studio 
the money that I have spent on gadgets and cables and programs and, and courses and things. And a lot of it was like, oh, ugh, shouldn't have done that. But it's all part of the journey, you know, and you've got to take that risk and you've got to get and find the good in it. You know, there's, yeah. there's treasure to be found in every darkness. That's not laying out on the street. Even if something has been a total disaster, you'll help your mind if you think, well, hang on, what came out of it that is good? If I can come out of a prison situation and have something that builds my life and builds other people's lives and makes them better at their jobs so they don't flake under pressure and quit and cost in turnover and, and, and so on, if, if I can build them, then that's treasure. You know, that's valuable. So yeah. look for the good, look for the lessons, look for the treasure in every circumstance. Yeah, I'm, I, I have to say, uh, you know, your story is really inspiring. And it also reminds me a little bit of um, there's, uh, there's a great friend of mine who, who became a friend through, he, he's a skateboarding, was a skateboarding professional, now a co coach, actually coached Ooh. one of the Olympic silver medalists there recently. However, he became, he became a pro in his early 20s. He was this mad, mad guy, would do anything. Um, but he got too into drink and drugs and, you know, destroyed, lost all his sponsors, ended up homeless, right? And, um, and he was either going to prison or, or the graveyard. But uh, he managed, uh, you know, to pull his life around. And, you know, today he's this great inspiration. And he, he started coaching my son skateboarding at like, he, my son was about six or seven, but he's been a tremendous role model. Um, and, and just, so my, my point is like, he's been able to share so much wisdom about choices and consequences and all of that. And, you know, staying true to who you are. And, and just like yourself, I, I just think it's, it's amazing how much you can learn from people who have unfortunately had traumatic experiences. Yes, you will have your own, you will have your own oopsies to learn from, but it's really, really much, much, much better to learn from someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'll do so, it for you. I'll yeah, yeah. It for you. Well, yeah. Thank you. I, I think, I, uh, I'll, on behalf of everybody, I will thank you for for sparing most of us that experience. <laughs> So listen, oh, Trish, this has been fantastic. Like all of Trish's information is going to be below this um, video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, I work with organizations who want to build resilience in their leaders so their leaders last and to have leaders and teams that can adapt to change and be able to move into the future together. We're in a really rocky time now. And now is the time to be building encouragement into your leaders and teams and giving them tools so they can keep going forward and bring your company with them. And the tools of the future are no longer just um, persist, hard, hard headed, go, 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 go. It's about thinking and relating and using your heart as well so that you have that extra dynamic, those, those people skills, you know, people call them soft skills. That's garbage. Yeah, I call I them that. smart skills. Yeah. Yeah. So no, you I, might know how to turn a widget, but if you're not easy to get along with, if, you, if you're someone people avoid, you're not going to make any money. Not yeah, in this no, climate. I, I agree. And I do think, uh, I'm glad you raised that. I do think that was the worst naming of something ever with soft skills because, you know, especially the way, you know, traditionally, if you said, you know, oh, I want to spend some money on training people, you know, to on this software or this thing or these skills, people say, yeah, yeah I want to train them on, on some soft skills. You go, who needs that? Come on. It's too yeah, easy it's to like dismiss. Soft and hard. Yeah. And it's kind of masculine and feminine, isn't it? It's kind of like soft as girly. <laughs> and it's like, well, no, 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 no. That's, that's, not, that's not the right thinking. You've, no. you've got to have the complementary way of doing things. Otherwise, you're stuffed. Yeah, absolutely. It's like riding a, riding a bicycle with, with one pedal. You can't do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. 
Listen, uh, again, Trish, this has been fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom. And uh, I would encourage people, as I said, all of Trish's information is going to be below this video. So I would encourage you to check it out. And uh, and 10, 10 books, I think it is. Or no, sorry, how many books is it here? <laughs> Three, three. I have three, but they're also in ebook form, so yeah, they can yeah, get yeah. Them from my website, speakertrishjenkins.com, or on on Amazon. If you buy it on Amazon, shoot me a note to say you did, so I can say good day. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I'm available for uh, keynoting and workshops to help you, your leaders and teams. Yeah, absolutely. Dangerous wealth: what every successful woman needs to know about to avoid being ripped off. Treasures of darkness: a prison journey, and weapons of cash destruction: protect your fortune from fraud. There you yep. go. Yes. So all right. Those books are available. All right. Well, listen. Thanks again. Thank you all for watching and listening, and I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.